Hey Trubbers, a few years ago I made a video about freelancing and the video was titled Freelancing um, Dream versus Reality. And now I want to make an update to this video because few things changed, you know, new circumstances and so on. So I want to really walk you through all the things that people think about when they get into freelancing and what this turns out to be. Okay, so first I'm gonna recap this other video that I made uh, back then and I really wanna give you um, this default view that people have on freelancing, which is if you, if you think about freelancing, you're gonna really uh, imagine like, you know, when, when we're gonna make associations in your, in your head, when you're gonna imagine this, what are you gonna think of, right? You're gonna think of for our work week, right? Lying at the beach, uh, sipping cocktails, um, doing cool creative work. Um, for example, writing something creative, designing, you know, doing all those cool things. Ideally, uh, living in Southeast Asia or somewhere where you perceive this to be uh, less expensive and really you know, living the life, right? So that's that's basically what people imagine. And really this dream is very appealing because usually when people think about getting into freelancing from having a job, they, um, they think about, you know, I don't want to have this rainy, cold weather in Europe uh, or in the US. Uh, I want to not be told what to do uh, and want to be paid proportionally to the results of the work that I'm bringing. Uh, and then the third thing that they think of is that they want uh, they want to uh, not be forced to be in one location, right? So, by the way, this video is a bit of a rant. So now every day you can listen to those videos in a form of a podcast and you can do it on um, iTunes and on Spotify and on SoundCloud. So you really have three different platforms uh, to choose. And if you want to, you know, take this on the go with you, listen to it. Uh, instead of just watching it uh, on YouTube, you can always do that. Um, so getting back to the story. So those are the, the the three things. The third thing was that they they just don't like um, being location dependent. They don't like sitting in a uh, cubicle. And really, those are the key things that people have a uh, problem with. Uh, when it comes to having a job uh, and this is and maybe the fourth one is not having um, interesting people to surround themselves with because they basically go to work and at their job they are surrounded by not people like them because they perceive themselves as kind of farther away from this kind of you know they see um, they see jobs and people coming to work as being, you know, below them in a way, uh, because all those people, they just talk about, you know, maybe they're going to get a little bit higher salary or, or, or I'm going to give you an example. Maybe I'm not a great example of freelancer only, but more of entrepreneurial minded person. But when I was working uh, for Deutsche Telekom uh, in a corporation as a recruiter, I had people coming to work and oh my God, I mean, like the, the, the point of view that they have on the reality, like the views that they have, and I'm not talking about this company in particular, I, I'm talking about every employee in every company ever is just so, um, it's just so dumb. Let's just put it this way. Just so dumb because I mean, it really feels like those people, they are uh, literally watching television, uh, repeating some uh, leftist bullshit about high taxes and 
uh, and they say that starting a business is impossible or quitting a job is impossible. So that's most of the people in jobs. That's that's like most of the society. And um, at this time, and it's a bit of a rant. At this time, when I was uh, when I was working in uh, corporations, I, I I felt like wow, those people are like really dumb, most of them. And that I know that I can do it. I can start a business. I don't have to work in a corporation. It's a temporary um, situation. So. So this is something that a lot of people also have problem with. They they just don't like they just don't like being in in those um, setups of, of of people who are basically not bringing them up, but um, in one way or another they are uh, bringing them down by by their views, by you know like the things that they believe in i remember when i was when i was in the uh, in this company i i just listened to people and i'm like wow like your views of the world are so skewed you have no idea um but you just basically become and that, that that's what i always had have been and i'm i still am um you become an um, dirt bag or um, some kind of outlier and you have really two two ways of dealing with it or there are two possible outcomes so the first outcome when you become this outlier is that uh, you are straight up awesome and everybody thinks you're cool and uh, you're just, you know, killing it. Um, because everybody's like, okay, this person is so different, but it's so cool. Uh, and this is what I had when I worked, uh, for a corporation. And then, um, when I was at, um, uh, at one school, I was so different, but in like a, you know, different way that than you can imagine. I had like long hair, used to look like a Harry Potter, um, and uh, was bullied a lot. So that's like another another way of being different where people are just not accepting you. So basically the point being is that as a uh, person who's more of a freelancer, you are probably more uh, entrepreneurial because those two things go in together. And probably you are a little bit different than uh, the rest of the society, and you probably don't accept their views as much. Uh, that's very, very common pattern. And I can say this, not just coming from my own experience, but coming from experience of more than 250 people that I've worked with, uh, who were converted from freelancing to running a business inside the tribe. Uh, I can tell you that most of those people were some kind of outliers. They were different and they, um, they were either, you know, punished for this or glorified. So, you know, just like my story, it might go two ways. So coming back to your story as a freelancer, because now we that went really deep to, to discuss why you have this, uh, fourth, um, you know, thing that you imagine, which is you don't want to surround yourself with uh, people that you're surrounding yourself with now, and you're thinking to change something to surround yourself with better people. So really, those are the, the four things. Now, about the winter and avoiding it, I mean, I'm not going to get to this motivation. It, it just happens to be common. Um, and uh, about somebody not telling what to do, I guess this is very similar to being an outlier and believing in oneself more than others and basically not having this uh, submissive mindset of um, the submissive mindset of um, somebody told me to do something and therefore I should do it. So one example is uh, there are uh, police controls sometimes when I when I drive um car uh in southeast asia and uh people have to stop the car and i'm the kind of person that doesn't stop uh through the through the um, control 
and uh, and then you keep driving and most of the times they don't chase you uh, but then most of the people would submit and I think that big part of this um, is well not this example not only this example but really any example of um, any kind of form of government telling you what to do or any kind of authority telling you what to do and you submitting to this, um, it's kind of a social conditioning where you learn to listen. And that's a massive uh, difference between those who are uh, in the leading positions and those who are in the job positions, okay? So, um, so then you have this dream, okay? So let's tap on this now. So then you have this dream you have a dream of i want to i want to be a freelancer because i don't want to be in this uh shitty rainy weather and i want to go to a cheap country and i want to have good life and i don't want to be told what to do i don't i want to do creative things i want to surround myself with people that like cool people creative people uh, I don't want to be the submissive uh, slave. I want to be independent. So this is the dream, okay? And now we're getting really deep. So the last video I made a few years ago was like very specific breakdown. Um, this is me getting really deep to the root of the whole matter. So what happens is that as an answer to those deeply rooted needs, as an answer, uh, there is a uh, response because this is the market demand that you're having here and then there is a supply and um, the supply that you are going to discover and most of the people are going to discover and therefore statistically you are more likely to discover is going to be whatever gone uh, pop cultural whatever gone populist whatever got popular so even within uh, being an outskirt, um, even in being, you know, this person out of the society and feeling like you're such a rebel, even in this, uh, there is a pop market. And in this pop market, there are few names that uh, became popular uh, in particular, and one of the one of the people in there, and that's a very small world um, of um, self development books, very small world uh, with with very few uh, authors in there that uh, you know people keep discovering and thinking like, wow, I'm I'm so much smarter now. But in fact, they just read the exact same books that most of the people read on this topic. So the most popular. Uh, in this sub niche is Tim Ferriss with Four Hour Work Week, and that's the answer to your demand. And the answer to your demand is okay, cool. You wanna uh, have freedom, drink coconuts, lear learn how to dance salsa. You, um, you, you read Four Hour Work Week, and you work four hours per week. And um, then I was interviewing, um, or yeah, I was interviewing um, um, Riley Riley Bennett from Living That Life on the book, and we had a dispute. And his argument was that this is a figure of speech, uh, that that's a four-hour work week. I get it; that's um, a figure of speech, but at the same time, uh, that's this is this is what really creates the dream. You know, you imagine yourself as a freelancer. Um, you know, sipping coconut by the beach, and 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 first, uh, let's address uh, this point, and let's first compare this point to reality. So, reality is that as a freelancer, you are most likely not going to work from the beach, and. The reason for this is that, um, first of all, your computer gets too hot, too hot, and it gets too slow to work with. Secondly, you're not gonna get good internet connection. Thirdly, you're not gonna be able to pick calls because it's too windy, 
and people not gonna be able to hear you. Uh, fourth, if you are doing something like design or writing, you're not gonna really see what you're doing because the, the sun is just too bright. <laughs> um so 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 that's it like those are those are the few reasons why you're not going to work at the beach um but yes sure you can live by the beach like i do i live right next to beach and every morning when i wake up the first thing i do is i go for an hour walk um by the beach at the beach and i swim and enjoy and um, keep myself healthy and and get back and sit here and work and and you need and you're gonna need that and you're soon gonna realize it that the larger your organization or company gonna grow the more important it's gonna become to you to have a proper office setup so the whole thing you're escaping from the whole idea of being in an office and cubicle you're escaping from is soon going to transition into, well, I guess this office thing, you made sense, uh, but that's going to be your office. So it's good, right? Nobody's going to tell you what to do. Uh, I have my own schedule. I do everything at the time I want, and we can talk about this uh, later, but, but you're going to have, you're going to have the necessity of, having a office, an office and um, as you can see I mean I'm I spend most of the time in Southeast Asia and and I still have a setup that is that is a proper office setup and as you're gonna grow your company on top of this you're gonna uh, you're gonna even build an office and keep people working in the office so the thing is that, the whole idea of the, you know, escaping from the office is probably, if you're working on a computer, uh, is probably gonna, is gonna circumvent back to the idea of working uh, in something like office. And you soon will uh, not enjoy working from your bedroom because you're gonna see that, well, the bedroom thingy is just not working out. Uh, I need a proper setup, uh, and you and you're just gonna get another office. So this thing is not gonna change. Now, sure, you can make it wherever you want. Uh, sure, it's gonna be your office, and you're the boss at the office. But you're gonna have an office. Um, then the the second thing about surrounding yourself uh, with people alike. Yes, you're not gonna surround yourself with. Um, um, with employees who are on the same level as you and you have all this uh, you, you you like sync submissive kumbaya all together uh let's call it sumbaya so so you're not gonna have to sumbaya with them um but you're gonna have to have team members and they all gonna have that mindset and you're gonna have to deal with people like this uh and and well depends because you might just stay a freelancer with just one person business uh, where you are really a freelancer, where you really do all the work, which, you know, I use the word freelancer more, more as a figure of speech. And I rather uh, refer to this as the entry level entrepreneur who's utilizing his her skill um, to generate revenue, to build a business, hire people and uh, outsource this work uh, by creation of the processes but but even if you're gonna work by yourself uh, then yes you can exclude yourself from the society uh, but you are uh, you're you then need to take control of your social life because you're gonna realize that there are not many people like you there are less business owners or uh, freelancers than uh, employees and it's gonna be uh, this another challenge for you to to actually finding those people alike and if you are not in entrepreneurial groups such as tribal mastermind uh, you're gonna feel lonely really lonely so if you uh, if you want to get that uh, ability to to hang out with people who are like yourself then 
you're gonna need to be in some entrepreneurial communities and ideally hosted online in a way where uh, members are all around the world. So if you're gonna change locations, you're gonna find those people at those places. Then uh, the third thing about moving to countries with better weather. So if you're gonna move to developing countries uh, such as Southeast Asia or uh, really any you know, developing country, you're gonna realize that the cost of living is not lower than it is in the West if you have a um, proper uh, office life. So you're gonna see that having a car is two to three times more expensive in Southeast Asia than in Europe or in the US. Uh, you're gonna see that the cost of living of the quality that you need to run operations is quite high. It's not gonna be as low as in Europe or in the US where processes are already very well polished and things just work. So you're gonna have a lot of issues with this. So this idea that, uh, that living in Southeast Asia or in developing countries is cheaper is just not true. Um, it is cheaper when you are a backpacker and you you want to have a cheap lifestyle. And yes, you can have a very cheap lifestyle if you are this kind of freelancer who doesn't want to build a serious business. You don't need an office setup, you don't need a car, you can drive something like a motorbike, like you know, people locally, um, you can uh, eat like local food, then yes, you, you, you might get a uh, cheap lifestyle and you might enjoy it for some time. But I don't think that this is something that most of the people will enjoy for an extended period of time. Uh, most of the people who are uh, living like this for a few years, eventually they are just either coming back to Europe or the US where they have proper uh, healthcare um, and everything just works uh, and it's much cheaper or they just uh, invest double or triple as if they would be living in the West uh, for the luxury of having Western lifestyle in developing uh, countries. So this is something that yes, you can still do, but it's not going to be cheap. Then in regards to deciding what you need to do, yes, you are going to be in a complete control to decide uh, what needs to be done, but you're going to need to step up your game. So freelancing is not for people who are lazy. This is like you want it, right? You want it to be paid proportionally for the uh, results you're bringing into the company. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get proportionally for the results you're bringing into the company. So you are going to work your ass off and work so much on self-development because you're going to figure that everything that you believed in your little employee world before, uh, such as uh, we need to have high taxes and pay a lot to people who deliver the work, you're going to realize that this is all bullshit and that you're going to have to chase your sales like a crazy motherfucker. Uh, you're going to have to find your leads like crazy. You're going to see the value of sales and you're going to see the value of developing business and you're going to see that this is a massive amount of work and you're going to be like, oh yeah, right. People who just get projects and deliver the work, they should get peanuts because I mean, they just do simple thing. They don't have to get customers. They don't have to do sales. You just going to go through this enormous pain of finding customers and sales. And you're going to, you know, you're going to get kicked in the butt so much. It's going to hurt so much. You're going to develop a lot of grief. <laughs> And you're going to be like, all right, um, I either going to get an easy, comfortable job or I going to keep uh, freelancing. And it's, it's, it's a serious, serious entrepreneurial step that I'm taking. It's a very, it's a very serious engagement. And that's only for people who are willing to, um, to put their best into it because 
you are going to literally uh, get paid proportionally to the work you put in and the output that you generate for the business. So um, you're going to have to step up your game. You're going to have to be absolutely insane with every part of the business. You won't be able to just, um, you know, do something and uh, get paid or you, you, you won't be able to um to like not work a uh, few hours because there is not much work because people gonna keep you accountable for it because they pay you for each hour or for your time they no longer keep you in as an employee so they're gonna be like all right you're we no longer work with you because you're not putting in the hours we we're paying you for or you're gonna have to bring awesome results and they're gonna keep you um you're gonna have to pay your social insurance yourself and you're gonna have to pay for all, for all your expenses yourself. So you're gonna be really stepping up your game. So the final verdict is that uh, freelancing is absolutely amazing for um, for people who are uh, going to step up, become the best versions of themselves. And um, you know, on this top upper level of freelancing, uh, you you gain just so many fruits. You get this freedom. You can be in nice warm country with great weather. You're gonna have to pay more than in the West, but you can afford it. Um, you're gonna have you're gonna have the um, you're gonna have to work a lot, and you're gonna have to uh, step up your game to be the best version of yourself. But if you're willing to do something like this, then you're gonna get amazing reward because you're no longer gonna be submitted, uh, little minion, uh, and you no longer gonna have to be in one location. Uh, you're gonna be able to choose the location. Uh, but uh, as they say in Spider-Man, with great freedom comes great responsibility. So choose wisely. Breathe and feel the life and feel our